Darwin came to the Galapagos Islands on the Beagle under the command of Captain Fitzroy. Um, it was just part of a round-the-world trip which actually ended up taking five years. Darwin was particularly fascinated by the fauna and flora and geology of the Galapagos Islands. It's not really true, as is often believed, that he got his road to Damascus moment. It's not true that Darwin suddenly, on Galapagos, got a bolt of lightning in his brain that taught him about natural selection and evolution. Um, at the time, Darwin was probably still a creationist. Uh, he had been destined for the clergy as a young man. It was a typical career of uh, younger sons who weren't good at anything else, and Darwin's father didn't think he was good for, for very much, and so he thought he'd better go into the church. Um, Darwin always had a passion for natural history, and so he was delighted to be signed up for the, for the Beagle. But he was still a creationist. He'd read his William Paley's evidences. He'd read, um, which, which was standard uh, fare for Cambridge undergraduates at the time. Um, and it was only later when Darwin came to think through what he'd learned from the Galapagos and the specimens that he'd collected on Galapagos, uh, specimens which were later collated and sorted in the, in the museums, uh, he, he then used the information, uh, but it didn't hit him at the time. Now, what would have hit him, if it had, so to speak, was something like this. He did notice that the fauna and flora of Galapagos are similar to that of the South American mainland, but yet different. So it's easy to interpret it as being derived from the South American fauna, but yet changed in an interesting way. And whenever you look at islands that are off a major continent, that's what you see. On the evolutionary worldview, that's easily explained as the animals get occasionally blown across or drift across from the mainland onto the island. When they get to the islands, they then have the opportunity to evolve in a different direction without being swamped by gene flow from the continent. If there's constant gene flow from the continent, if, if animals are always getting blown across from the continent to the island, then there's no reason why the island animals shouldn't just go on being the same as those on the continent. There has to be separation, a sufficient number of miles of separation so that they evolve separately. And that's what you get on an archipelago like Galapagos. That's what happened with the finches, that's what happened with the tortoises, and so on. Once the animals arrive on the island by this rare event of being blown across, freak event, like iguanas being drifted across on a raft of mangroves, land iguanas, once that happens, they then are isolated from the mainland for maybe another 10,000 years, plenty of time for evolutionary change, so that when the next lot gets blown across on a mangrove raft, when the next lot gets blown across, the ones on the island have become sufficiently different that they can't interbreed with each other, and so they become a different species. On a smaller scale, the same thing goes on between different islands, different islands which are much closer to each other than any of them is to the mainland so that driftings across happen a bit more often, but nevertheless it's still sufficiently seldom that they can and do evolve to become separate species. So what we find on the Galapagos is that the, um, e each island has its own variety or its own species which locals could actually recognize, and Darwin knew that. He was told, for example, that the locals could, could tell from the shape of the shell of the tortoises which island they came from. Weirdly, though, Darwin didn't really take full advantage of that fact. His collection of finches, the so-called Darwin's finches, where he collected from several of the different islands, he didn't even label them as to which island they came from. Uh, and it's a sort of irony, in a way, that he had to borrow Fitzroy's specimens, because Captain Fitzroy, the arch-creationist, had also collected 
birds, and he had labelled them. So it was Fitzroy specimens that were correctly labelled, whereas Darwin's weren't, uh, that helped Darwin to get his uh, key insight about the Galapagos fauna.